So uh, we're going to cover the OSI model, which stands for the Open Systems Interconnection Model. This is probably the longest lecture that we have. <laughs> um, so the OSI model is what describes how our networks function. Okay? So the OSI model was developed originally in 1977 by the International Organization for Standardization. Uh, it's known, you'll hear it referred to as the OSI model or the OSI stack. Both of them are, are consistent in terms. Uh, either way, it does consist of seven layers that are shown here on the left. We're going to go through each of these layers for you. Uh, the physical, data link, network, transport, session, presentation, and application layers. Uh, and the reason why it's important is it's very helpful for us when we troubleshoot our networks. You will see a lot of questions on the test where they'll give you a problem and describe it, and you'll have to figure out, based on their description, are we talking about a data link problem, layer two? Or are we talking about a transport layer problem, layer four? Or an application layer problem, layer seven? So as we go through, uh, it will help you in your troubleshooting efforts. So why do we even have this reference model? Because that's all the OSI model is, it's a reference model. In fact, the OSI model doesn't even describe our current networks perfectly. Um, it is a generalized model that will talk about all computer networks, not just the one we use nowadays. Uh, but it does help us categorize the functions into particular layers. So if I'm talking about a switch, for instance, a switch operates with physical addressing at the data link layer, layer two. If I'm talking about a router, it works off IP addresses, so it's a layer three issue with networks. And we'll be able to talk about that with the various different layers. It allows us also to compare our technologies across different manufacturers. So if I'm looking at a device that's a Juniper switch or a, or a uh, Cisco switch, they may operate both at the layer two, and I can compare them equivalently. Maybe the Juniper switch is a multi-layer switch, and it does layer two and layer three. But the Cisco switch I'm looking at is only layer two. I need to be able to understand that to know what functions it'll be able to support for me. And be, by being able to understand the different functions at a layer, we can understand how we can best communicate with that particular device. Switches talk differently than routers, uh, and both of those talk differently than web browsers, right? They're all at different layers of the OSI model. So, as I said before, we have seven layers of our OSI model. It is the physical, the data link, the network, the transport, the session, application, uh, presentation, and application layers, uh, going from the bottom to the top, okay? Uh, the way we like to remember this is we use, please do not throw sausage pizza away, okay? Um, so one of the things that for students who don't have the OSI model memorized perfectly yet, when it comes time for test day, using your cheat sheet, right, your, your brain dump, if you will, um, putting down one through seven and going P, D, N, T, S, P, A will help you remember where you are, right? Because if you don't remember the seven layers, you're gonna get yourself screwed up on test day, okay? Um, the way I remember this, because I'm a military guy, uh, is please do not tell Shore Patrol anything because it helps me remember it better because um, you don't want to get arrested by Shore Patrol, right? Uh, so please do not tell Shore Patrol anything or please do not throw sausage pizza away. Either way, it is your acronym. There's a ton of other ones out there. Uh, if you have a dirty mind, just go on the internet. You'll see other people have a dirty mind too. Uh, there are lots of them out there. I'm not going to teach you those, but those are the two I use. All right, so starting uh, with data types. So as our data goes up or down the different layers of the OSI model, the data becomes different. So when I start at the physical layer down at the bottom, I start out with bits, which is ones and zeros, right? And when we talk about physical layer, we'll talk about that's things like our media and our cabling. If I'm dealing with that over a copper cable, it's actually a voltage, whether it's a you know, positive 5 volts or negative 5 volts. Uh, if I'm dealing with a fiber optic cable, it's using light, on or off, as your one and zero. If I'm dealing radio waves, it's the peaks and valleys of the radio frequencies. As I go up into layer two, it becomes frames. Uh, and we actually take a bunch of bits, become a group of frames, or it becomes a frame. Uh, once I take a group of frames, I put them together and I get a packet, which is in layer three. So when you talk about IP, for instance, internet protocol, you're talking about IP packets, right? Layer three routing. Uh, when we get up to layer four, we take a bunch of packets together and we get a segment. And that's when we start talking about like TCP and UDP, where we group things together uh, to, to a group of data. And then we take a bunch of segments, and that becomes data, which is what we actually use in our applications. And so if we start out with data, we can go back down, segments, packets, frames, and bits, transmit it over the wire. When you receive it, it goes bits, frames, packets, segments, data. And we go up and down those layers. You also have to remember those and where they fit in in the layers, right? Um, and there's an acronym for that as well. It's... Don't some people fear birthdays, right? So DSPFB. Uh, and again, that's going top to bottom on this one. 
and that is the OSI model.